Right. Hey right. everybody, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. The internet then disconnected, yeah, but we t- is back. Yeah, <laughs> we had a difficulty. We had to call IT. Technical difficulties. We had to call IT, which was me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up here like, what the heck? What the heck is going on? But anywho, we got uh two different um uh uh oh, internet um what do you call it? Uh, no Supplies. um we can log into two different internet uh, because I work from home. So like sometimes I'll have my kids log into one, and I'll log into the other. We got two like uh, codes, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I know you got, where they I know you where they not running across the whole the same thing. Well, I, it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, too many people on there can't crash. Yeah, like right. if you got too many people in the house, and I think because everybody's home right now. And I was on the mm-hmm. I was on the one where everybody be on, so I had to switch over. Can we say hi to her? Yeah, hey Roxanne, how you hey, doing, Roxanne. sweetheart? Sorry, y'all. Sorry that it had got disconnected and everything. But anyway, we back. But um, as far as uh, what uh, when uh, Mama Sislo, which actually let what's her hold up, what's her new name now? It's um. Is is Miss Cislo net networthy update? So that's the new name now. Um. <laughs> oh shoot! I should have went back over and told them that we started a different live. <clears throat> but it's too late now because it already ended. I think. <laughs> yeah, it already ended. But anyway, for those who tune in, um. We was well, Mama Cislo. She hit the when when, when Sam got <laughs> <laughs> Sam was like, "Hold on, wait a minute." Well, Cause I, I, I've uh, been there. I've been there with that one. All that. I mean, when she said know, the passer, the yeah, passer, yeah. like the passer. And I'm telling you, up on the don't be disrespecting no passers, period. I'm right. Care, but and I know baby. you ain't supposed to put your. I know. I know. You know. You know. We both. You know. Been to church a lot during our lives. And I know that you're not supposed to speak negativity upon the word, the the man of God or the woman of God or, you know, something like that. But if you're a pastor and you're not taking care of your kids and you're not paying child support and stuff like that, I'm sorry, but you own limits now. You ain't off limits. You own limits now because you cannot be sitting up there preaching and telling people how to be this and how to be that and do this, that, and a third when you're not even taking care of your own. You ain't right. I hate that. You might as well be committing adultery or stealing from the offer plate or, you know, something like that because, I mean, come on. Pastors, I, I know they're not perfect. I know they're not perfect, but a man of the cloth who just does not pay child support just does not, does not. And really, again, when we was getting to, up, to not to, and, and and those are actually, I mean, you could say as a pastor, you get paid under the table, right? Because ain't nobody handing you a paycheck if it's your church. Ain't nobody handing you a paycheck. And I, I mean, at, at least, I don't know how this mm-hmm. modern stuff is now, but from the churches I went through when I was growing up, ain't nobody handing you a paycheck. They just get, you get a pastor this. They take it out the offer price. Get a pastor this. That go to the pastor. That go to the organist. That go to this person, to the secretary. That goes to the um youth church. That goes to, you know, the and building fund. They ain't writing out no checks to everybody. They just taking the money out the offering plate. Then at the end of the year, that's when you settle everything and you do your, you know, you do your taxes or something. If you do your taxes. If you do your taxes. So, yeah, I, I get why, you know, what where Miss Cislo and Sam was coming from. Because it, it's, it's, it's like, pastors, you are not exempt from taking care of your children. And y'all should be the ones out there telling the other men and the other women, take care of your kids, take care of your kids your that need it. Oh, Maurice, you missed it. You missed it, Maurice, because the, the, the live had shut down. But, yeah, Samantha went in when she was talking to uh, Mama Cislo <laughs> on the phone. Maurice said, um, and Maurice, you need to call in because uh, you you calling, you speaking from a man's point of view. And I know there are really 
good men out there, really good fathers who take care that. of their kids. I, want, that's you what know? I, I did want to, I did want, I did, you right, you mm-hmm. sure right, I did. And the, and women, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes it's reason people want to finish their education, you know, and they might like let the, the dad take care of the kids at the time or the mom. Mm-hmm. But when people get straight, they get straightened out. Yeah. But don't, don't, don't not sit up there and be, you supposed to be leading somebody a certain way in life and right when you're not right yourself. And don't tell that child that they, mom, daddy, or whoever ain't the one, whoever wants, see, we see the child's work, only wants the money for themselves. That, that, you know what? Make sure that that child knows. Don't wait until the child gets grown and they want to tell Oh, I'll tell your kid how the real you, and I'll tell him why you really wanted the money. Okay, but you can't tell him that because I bet you they'll sit down and run it, run it down. But you can always tell your kid in a nice, polite way. A lot of times, I lie about why the money wasn't coming, just to make it look good, and I, and I did, you know, because you don't want you don't want the children. To um hate the other parent because, because like the, the 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 son that I have whose father owe money, I mean he can tell you I can call him up from his bedroom right now, he can tell you, Mama never talked bad about my father because he was also involved in their lives and it was never never a time. When he said, I want to come get my son, or da 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 da, my son darn near be on the curb waiting. With his book bags, his overnight bag, his toothbrush, his do rag, and his. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it was never, ever, ever, my son's father can testify. And a lot of people on here who follow me know my son and know my father because he's kind of popular around the city. But, um,. And uh, he he has a lot of friends, so his his dad is you know kind of you know well known around the city, um not in a bad way, but you know what I mean, like well known. And I've never ever kept him away from him, but I really didn't you know want to do that because to me what as a parent as a parent who was also a child who grew up without their father, um and their mother took care of them, I never got one cent. From my dad. Not one penny. From my dad. My mother never got one penny. From my dad. So as a child who grew up. Without receiving child support. Or whose mom didn't receive child support. You know from my father. It was like. As a child you don't know that. As a child you don't know that. Because a good parent. Is not going to discuss child support and money and arrearages and all that kind of stuff with a child. Because when you do that, especially if the child's father is not around or the child's mother is not around, when you do that, you just, you just piling on you know, the negativity on the relationship between the child and the parent. A child who already hardly doesn't see their parent and then find out they ain't even paying. They ain't put nothing on the pencils on school. They ain't put nothing on their school clothes, on their pictures, on their basketball camp, on their lights, their gas, their bedroom set. They ain't doing nothing at all. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. I never, I never. My child, my oldest one, didn't know anything about arrearages or any of that till he was grown. When he got grown, I told him how much his father owes in child support. He was like, dang, how did we get by? And I'm like, what you mean how you got by? Did your mama not work two jobs most of the time? Did your mama not work at one time three jobs? At one time, I worked three jobs for three months. It was around the holidays. Um, And it was like literally around the time where I had got laid off from because I used to do real estate. And I had got laid off and I was just taking jobs, just taking jobs. And some of the jobs weren't like enough 
they weren't comparable to the income I was used to receiving. So I worked at, um, where did I work at? I worked at Dollar Stores, Dollar General, or whatever that place was. And then I had, I had a job from, like, the daytime, and then I had a job in the evening time. And I think, what was I doing in the evening time? I think I was sorting mail, something like that. And then on the weekend, I worked at the Dollar General. I worked at the Dollar General. <clears throat> and basically, I was like a cashier, you know, in stocking and stuff. But I did that for Christmas because I had got laid off of my good job because the economy went south, you know, back then when I told y'all on the other live that got interrupted. Um, around like 2007, 2008, when the economy went bad, everybody was losing their jobs in the real estate and everybody was losing their houses and all that kind of stuff. So that was around that time. And I was just applying anywhere. I didn't care because one thing about me and a lot of other parents is you can owe me a million dollars in child support, but I bet you we will never go hungry. My child will never go hungry and, and he will never miss a day <laughs> where he's not taken care of. Now, I might have to say, okay, hon, wait till payday. You know, and I'll get you this. Or wait till payday, and I'll get you that. But we never went without. We never got evicted. I've never been evicted. I've never had any utilities off. We've been having cable for like 30, 50 years. We've been having cell phones, house phones, ADT. I mean, intranet, internet. I mean, the stuff that most people have, we were able to have. Because I didn't rely on Child that. And, and, and a lot of times, people, when you buy stuff, I, I'm sure you probably, you know, you can, you're familiar with this, Sam. When you buy stuff, uh -huh. whether you're renting a house, buying a house, buying a car, renting furniture, whatever, and they ask you for all your incomes, whether I was getting child support or not getting child support at the time, I never included the child support in the application. Because a lot of times it says other income and they will use that other income to determine how much you make a month and determine how much your payments will be but child support you cannot rely on it all the time so i have never whether i was renting a house buying a house buying a car whatever i've always just used my income because i knew i could rely on me i might not can rely on that child support but i can rely on me and that's how I did stuff. Like, like when I, I was a young parent. Well, no, I wasn't really a young parent. I had my first son when I was like 23. When I was like 23. So I wasn't real young, but I was still young. And ever since then, every time I got something or tried to get something, I never used child support to determine mm -mm. what I could or could not pay because it's not it's not always consistent. It's not always consistent. I, I got child support from... Well, I won't say I received it, but I had child support orders for both of my kids there. Now, my youngest son, Dad, no problem. My oldest son, Dad, they used to be bonus. And what I mean by that is, if it came, it came. If it didn't, it didn't. But when it did, if we needed something, and us as a unit, if we needed something, me and my two sons, what... I did was we gonna use this money. Mm -hmm. Like once it was my son's birthday and I was cleaning up my, my oldest son, which the dad that owes the child support money. I was cleaning out a drawer in my room and I ran across the child support card. I mean, actually cleaning out a drawer. I was looking for some earrings for <laughs> seriously. And I saw the card and some said, Call this card. And it was almost my oldest son's birthday. And uh I, my son was showing me these different shoes that he wanted for track because he was running track and it was his uh, senior year. And uh, and I said, well, let, you know, most of the time I bossed up, I did it and I went with that. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. I know that life. But, <laughs> but when I called that car, they had took like almost $2,000. Well, I ain't gonna say $2,000 from that, but when I called that car, it was almost two thousand dollars on this car. Hey. And uh it was almost my son's birthday, like I said, which I was one of the ones paycheck at the paycheck. But 
I would I would do what I said if you know even even if I didn't do it at the time I would came to him and I let him know you know we're gonna you gonna get it they knew it so they really never qu- questioned me about it but anyway long story short with that that money was on that card and me and my boys no lie my older son I said where where the shoes at and I said I said listen to this you know I said you know what we gave some we we did we, we gave money to the church off of it. Cause that's my choice and our business or whatever you know but we went to the mall and my son shot the, got, got the got the track shoes and he was finna graduate and they were some good expensive ones too and what we did what, what he did was he told me he said after he got done with his track scene it was a boy that was it was a junior in school and he said the boy was real good at track but his shoes went up to par so what he gave him, he gave him the shoes, and I said my son had been running the track, but the shoes we got the first time, they his, they they weren't good on his feet because he was doing them jump that jumping and, and he, he he the hurdle thing or whatever, mm-hmm. and he was doing other ones. So when the, when we found out his money, we got we got some different shoes. The other shoes was good too, but he only wore the ones that cost the more most money a few times. And he ended up giving them to a boy that that, that you know that, that was, was going to use them the next season. Yeah. And I appreciate it. My son still like that. He got a good giving heart. And we heart. done that before, too. My sons, even when I wasn't getting child support, my son's tennis shoes ranged from 150 to, like, 180 Yeah. All of their shoes, because they, they play sports. That was, like, a requirement of mine. You you play sports or you be in some kind of academic uh, yeah. extracurricular activity. So if you're not in any kind of academic extracurricular activities, then you're going to be in a sports, athletic, um, extracurricular activity. So they had their choice. They got to pick with sports, and it was usually always football and basketball. And on top of that, they did, like, uh, track and um, mm-hmm. track and uh, wrestling. So every quarter, they had to do a different uh, sports if they weren't doing anything academically. So... Imagine your child, some of y'all out there, y'all know, y'all got athletic children who um, are in sports the beginning of the year, the summer, the summer, because they going out of town, they on basketball teams, they on those, um, you know, those those camps. Oh, remember that time (laughs) we drove to Texas? Oh my God, one time we went down to Texas, so my son could attend a football camp, and you know, he got an award down there and everything. It was nice, it was nice. But what I'm saying is, um, people who have kids that go through sports, you gotta pay the regular stuff, like, or even if it's cheerleading. I'm gonna say cheerleading because I have nieces, and my niece, she would hit me up, Auntie Tanya. Um, um, uh, I, I want to do cheerleading, <laughs> and it costs um, and the and the outfits and the shoes. I was like, dang, <laughs> cheerleading costs that much. Cheerleading costs as much as it does, or more than. <laughs> the other uh, things that they were doing, the other, you know, uh, basketball teams, and you know, elite. That's what I was thinking of, the elite teams, the elite football teams and basketball teams, you know, outside of the school. Ooh. That stuff is expensive. Real expensive. Yeah. Roxanne said, my son refused to pay. Hold up. You said, my son refused to pay child support. He said, when I see the kid, I will pay. The mama be keeping the kids hostage. Oh, you know what? That's a good you one know. too. That's the one I want to talk about too, right there. With me, with my children, even after that, like my, like I said, my second child, no problem, hands down, he paid. You know, and I get it to him. But the oldest one, mm mm, but I ain't even worried about it because, like, you know what? It is what it is. But. Mm-hmm. One thing is, I never, ever, and I, 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 I did do this, and I'll be honest, I used to say I can't wait until my baby was old enough to be able to walk in and out of the house where I didn't have to go in there, he'll know my car, and come out. Mm-hmm. Because I was never the type to make, wanted to make my presence known, and I wasn't the type that clown them about child support, right. none of that stuff. But one thing I say is, I used to tell them, Tell them uh, if they if if the if the dads ever will say I I didn't want my kids being involved with them. Once they got old enough, I told my kids it's what they do, 
But one thing I wasn't gonna allow is nobody to hurt their feelings and talk to them and do anything like that. Now I wasn't gonna do that. Right. And I didn't have a problem, but like I said, with my older son, I just say, you know what? Whatever. But my with my youngest one, once at my I remember I told uh his grandma, I said, When you pick up one, don't worry about it, because you can pick up the other one if you want to, but I was just joking because my other son, you know. He was a bigger boy. He was always talking with my dad and my sister now. But if she would have took him, don't think this, I wouldn't have let him. I said we kicked her out the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't miss her. Sorry, Mrs. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't miss this Slow. <laughs> the, the live got interrupted. <laughs> and we had to start over. We didn't kick you out, boo. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. Out the whole thing, just gone. She said out the whole thing. <laughs> and no. they missed they missed the good part too. They missed the end of my Miss Sislow's conversation when uh. her and Sam was going in about the preachers. <laughs> mm. I mean, Y'all missed that part. <laughs> each is on and if you if you pastoring or however the work, you know, whatever, being a deacon or whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. don't sit up there and be telling nobody else what to do, right? What they say, you're supposed to sweep under your own roof or however that go. You sweep to get, your own make front it. porch first before you go around trying to tell somebody else about what they doing, you know, at they crib. Even if they never speak on paying their child support, but like, one thing I can say, and a lot of people might not agree, but one thing I say, when I do go to church, the church that I attend, I do like, very often I have heard the pastor say, if you got kids out there, when you leave here today, and you could possibly see them, or you could make a way to see them, then you go see them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that like, like us as parents, we, we don't, we, we didn't chose this person. It was something there or something, you know. I don't care if you was stone cold drunk. I don't care what. Y'all still made a child. The child and I asked to be here. And we should all stop. And us at our ages, as we go going to be grandparents or whatever, still tell our children, regardless if you ain't got nothing for this man or for this woman, y'all still got this still child together. Yep, take care. Take I told care my yours. sons, my sons will tell you, I told them, I said, I will disown you. In a heartbeat. I, I, I'm so serious. My sons, you know, we play a lot. Me and my sons have a very, very great relationship. We play a lot, but they, they know when, when I'm serious, it's I'm serious. serious. It's like a very yes. thin line. We could be playing around. You know, they be call, they call me, you know, we could be calling each other, hey, big head. You know, you know, you know how you play. <laughs> if you, okay, I, I didn't said this before. I didn't said this before. No, for real. I didn't said this before. Sometimes when you a parent, you have to remember being a child. Right. You have to remember. And one thing about it, when I was a child, I had a mother who was like just straight across the board. It was like she was really, 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 really <laughs> religious. As religious as you could be religious. Mm -hmm. Like some of y'all might have people in y'all family like that, either mom or grandpa or grandpa or uncle, just really religious. As reli When I say really religious, like my sons, when they would go spend a night at my mom's house when they was younger, you know, stay over there because she was like, oh, bring the kids by, bring the kids by. As soon as we hit the door, you hear gospel music blaring, um, the TV on gospel, the radio on gospel, and she might be reading from the Bible at the same time. Okay, that's really <laughs> religious. Um, ain't no watching no scary movies. Ain't watching no movies that got any kind of sexual scenes, any kind of violent scenes. Um, nothing like that. So basically, almost everything was off limits at my mama house, besides maybe uh, Wheel of Fortune, the news channel, <laughs> and some country westerns. <laughs> So my sons would bring their video games and sometimes we had to bring a TV because all my mother's TVs weren't upgraded, you know, to newer TVs for them to play their video games. So sometimes they would have to bring their small TV. <laughs> Two years holier than now, Maurice, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And I don't let me, my mom was one of those people. Where I'm telling you, one time I'm, I'm gonna 
gonna tell y'all a little story. One time, my ma had got into it with a neighbor, like two doors. No, it was like a door down because on the side of my mom's mm-hmm. house, they had a really big garden. My mom and dad always garden every mm-hmm. single li- year, no matter where we live. <laughs> they had a garden every year, and so the lady, um, a house down. She would always let her dog loose, and the dog would come over and poop all in they, you know, just all in their yard. My mom would tell her, you know, my mom is really like, people who know me, who live in Omaha, who know me, some of y'all are watching me right now, subscribe to my channel, they can testify. My mother was always this gentle spirit. And one time I came over there, and my mom was sitting on the porch. And the lady, now, I was inside the house. And the lady was on her porch, and I guess her and my mom had had, like, an incident earlier where my mom was telling her, you know, keep your dog out of my yard, you know. And the lady was on the porch, and she was cussing out my mom for no reason. This was, like, days after the situation. And she was just on her porch, just calling her all kind of names, just calling her all kind of names. My mom up there with the blood of Jesus, the blood of <laughs> without all the drugs um <laughs> my dad was real cool listened to certain kind of music might had a beer every now and then didn't hardly go to church that much my mom was like straight church girl you know they was opposites like truly opposites so i'll be like what the hell dad what the fuck you know I'm, I'm up here what what they say no, I'm telling you, no, no, no. And then my nickname was Pooh. No, Pooh, just just don't worry about P- What? Man, I heard that lady over there. I politely walked up, up, up to her yard. I'm like, excuse me, what the, what you saying to my mom? Let me find out. Let me find out. You 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 messing with my mom. We gonna have some problems. I said a whole bunch of other stuff, but I'm not gonna say it on here. Mm-hmm. And my mom mm-hmm. was over there like, no, don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Gotta get her. Gotta get her. <laughs> Well, I could see it. I mean, you can see. It. She knew my mom. She knew my mom. Look like this. <laughs> and she would just be there, like, gotta yeah. get her, uh-huh. gotta get her. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, "Thou shalt turn the other cheek." Go I mean, I'll, I'll be God. like, "Yes, Lord." Don't let us be in a grocery store or nowhere, and somebody <laughs> cut in line or did something. My mom be like, "No poo, no poo." I'm like. <laughs> Uh, we're going to dress this, Ma- Ma- Mary, right now. <laughs> I'm like, Mama, are you sure you brought the right baby home from the hospital? Because me and my mom was totally opposite. She was always so holy roller. Don't curse. Don't listen to worldly music. I mean, all this what kind of stuff. Mean by and that? I'm like worldly. so what street is that? and so hood. And so I will bust you in the mouth. And, t- you know, I'm... I was like that, and she was the total opposite. <laughs> I don't know how to happen. What, what, but what, what is that though? The one that um, people say uh, 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 what <laughs> worldly? What does that mean? No, worldly. Just, okay, let me let me break that? it down for y'all. For y'all who don't know, worldly means if you are real. Not nah, I won't even say a real Christian. I'll just say if you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, or Baptist or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, worldly music. It's basically blues and R&B or rap or anything that's not gospel. <laughs> you said, update, I'm going to turn into slapping earth. <laughs> what? <laughs> Marie said, I had a two-parent household, but if my mom was getting child support, she would have gave it to Jim Bay. No, 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 Marie. Did he say Oh, Jim God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And I don't <laughs> normally put stuff on stuff. When I, when I put stuff on stuff, that means I'm really serious. I don't know how many times my mama done sent stuff to Jim Baker. Uh, what's that other one? The one that, uh, the lady. Tammy Faye? Not Tammy Faye. Oh, my God. Um... I'm gonna have to think about a this. Modern lady I need to call my I need to call my, I need to call my dad. I need to call my dad. Cause my mama is up in heaven now, probably looking down at me cracking up. She like, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. That's my mama up in heaven right now, probably reading her Bible. <laughs> sipping on a little Kool-Aid, a little Lay-Lay. 
and talking to Jesus. Talking about she ain't lying. She ain't lying. But um, I can't think of that lady. She I can't remember name. the lady's Not name, but she was a really big, maybe that was her Joyce. Joyce Meyer. She's white. Yeah, was she a petite? Like she she built her now. No, this, I mean, this was like 20-something years ago. Oh, this was, I can't remember, but I swear. Me to it. <laughs> she sent so much money to people, and she would do it so, she'd be like, um, could you take me to the uh, grocery mm-hmm. store so I can get a, like, $50 money order? Because they done told me on the TV, if I send $50... But mm-hmm. I was going to get this, mm-hmm. and I'm going to get that, and I'm going to, my mom and my dad be up there like. It wasn't Joyce Myers, was it Maurice one? My dad be up there. I don't know if it was Joyce Myers. It was, Joyce Myers don't sound familiar. It was, mm-hmm. it was another name. It was another name. But she mm-hmm. was sent so much money, and my dad would be, every time, he'd be up there like. Because, <laughs> because my dad, <clears throat> when we was, I have said this before. Anything I say on here, I'm not ashamed to say it, and I don't always tell too much, you know, too much personal right. information or anything too embarrassing to anybody <laughs> I know. Um, but my dad, being that he wasn't oh. as super religious as my mom, he would let her do it, and he would he would let her do it. And oh, Maurice, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear that. <clears throat> Trust me. But you know. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. Yeah. And <clears throat> one thing I say about when I lost my mom, it was hard. A lot of people can tell you, who, you know, who knew me. It was hard. It was real hard. It was real hard. It was hard for me because I didn't know she was sick. She was one of those parents. When I'm talking about religion, she was one of those parents. When I say my mama was so religious, y'all. She was she one was. of those religious parents. I see nothing people. wrong with that. Well, but. Even when the doctor says, you have cancer. Oh, no, I don't have cancer. In the name of Jesus, Father in heaven said, I am healed and I am free. Lord, forgive me, Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm just keeping it up. I know. I'm just keeping it up. You know, I that know was my mama. Here. That was my mama. Mm-hmm. She did not allow them to do procedures that the doctors wanted to do, that they insisted of, and she believed that she was going to be healed. She didn't tell us. That's she true. told my father not to tell us. Me and my brothers, we didn't know. We did not know. Even sometimes I would go over to my mom's house and say, <clears throat> Mom, why you so? Why you look like you losing weight? Ma, what's 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 going on? Is there something I need to? I mean, I would like you know try to inquire, and she mm-hmm. would say, "Oh, Pooh, I'm just on a diet. I'm on a diet." I'm like, "But Ma, I'm the big girl. You don't need to lose no weight." My mama ain't never been like big, you know what I'm saying? I've always been up and down on the scale. My mother has always had a nice shape. I don't think she's ever been no more than, and she's taller than me, so I would say she's never been no more than two hundred pounds. But I, it was a shock to me when my mom died because literally from the time I found out she had cancer right. to the time she passed, how long ago was it? A month? A month and a half? It it wasn't that long. It was like a month. I only had a month, a month and a half to, di- to yeah, deal it. with it, mm-hmm. to take it all in, to plan a funeral, to plan. I mean, so Maurice, I don't know what happened to your mom, the details. But, yes, my mom said, by his stripes, I am healed. Mm -hmm. And she didn't allow the doctors to remove the uh, cancer cancer until I found out. When I found out that my mom was sick, it was when um, she was really sick one day. She fainted. My dad called us, said we're in the emergency room. I went. My brothers went. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with mom? And I'm like, I swear to God, like, I see my mom, like, every two weeks. Like, if not more. I was always visiting her. Like, always. We stayed, stayed, you know, not that far. Yeah, I was always there. And always calling her. And so, like, every time I seen her, she was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And when Dad called us and said she was in the emergency room, I was like... What is wrong with my mom? She done got small again. Is you still working out? I mean, what what's going on? And the doctor told me that she had colon cancer and that she's been dealing with this for a couple of years and had refused 
to get um, a biopsy when they first told her they saw a big mass and they thought it was cancer. She refused to get a biopsy so they could verify it. And it was the blood of Jesus. It was the, like Maurice said, by his stripes I am healed, you know, all that. And mm-hmm. I don't knock religious people for believing because I believe in God too. But that was my situation. And I just want to put that out there because I know other mm-hmm. people go through that because once I told my story mm-hmm. to some people, other people would tell me the same thing. My uncle, my grandpa, my mom, they had cancer. They wouldn't tell nobody. You know, they believed in God. They, You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to knock people from believing in God and believing in miracles because miracles still happen. But this is just my experience. And once I found out she was uh, had cancer, the doctor said we removed the big mass. But because she wouldn't let us do it like a year or so ago, it spread it, it, spread it mm-hmm. to her liver. And so now she has stage four colon cancer. And she literally had, they, they gave her, I think they gave her three weeks or something. And yeah, it was less than a month. They gave her three weeks, and I think she went like two weeks. I think she went like two weeks more from the time they gave her. Mm -hmm. But it was devastating because we had no time to digest it, and we had no time to grieve. It was just, okay, what are we going to do now? They put her on bed rest. They put her on hospice, and that's where it was Mm -hmm. for the next few weeks. We just, you know, tended to her. My brother, one of my brothers, he had just got hired on a job. He declined the job so he could be with mom, you know, when I couldn't be there because of my job. And my dad would be there at night. My other brother would be there overnight. So we took turns, like, taking care of her. But one thing I say with Maurice, no matter how your parent died, whether whether you know it's coming or whether you don't know it's coming, whether it's a murder, whether it's it's so hard with a parent. So so I Especially I, your I mama. sympathize and I empathize with you. To me. And I, I, never had it yet. I will keep you in my fam in your family in your prayers, like really, like real real stuff. I will keep you in my prayers because it is it's nothing like using your mom. It's like nothing like losing your mom. Because mm-hmm. that I saw my mom that morning. Yeah, her mom, you, you wanna tell your and, story? Uh, I know I went to her car, but I, I woke up late from work. For work, I mean, and she used to be my, take care of my son, take him to school and stuff like that. My oldest was just with him then. And, uh, so normally I walk to the car, you know, like I always, but that morning, she just threw her hand out the window like this, and then, you know, I figured, like, always, you're going to see them later, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she must have said something, but I remember her hand going out the window, and she must have told me to just go head on and send them down the sidewalk. Because, no, I would have took them, because I'd have been late before, too. But that, that was morning, Marcel, right? Your yeah, son? my yeah. oldest son, yeah. And so, um, you know, he they left, and I remember seeing a red car go down the hill, and I went on and got ready, went to work, and then I got the phone call. I was like, you know, she... Uh, was in the car accident, and my my son and my niece is in the car too. So I'm working a little ways from home, and then once we get to my sister house, you know, the street was blocked off. We had to go a certain kind of way, and you know, you, you get you know you get that feeling. And the man that was taking us up to the hospital, he said the kids okay, but the lady didn't make it. And I ain't never heard that voice in my but it was like a, I I know I was talking, but it seemed like I was talking soft. And I was like, don't say that, because that's that that lady was my mom. And a man, I ain't never, I ain't never ever looked at a man's face and seen that somebody felt so bad, and he was so. I mean, when, I ain't, ne- I ain't never had a poly- yeah, like that from somebody in my life ever since then. I mean, that man really hurt. It, he, I'm sure he heard it as he dropped me and uh, my cousin off. He was like, well, you know, sometimes everybody knows what they're talking about, but that's just what people say. He's like, no, I, he was like, you know, but I said, I said, you know what? I already knew, you know, I just really wanted to get to where, get to the hospital, that's all. I mean, I, I already had a feeling that he kind of verified it, but I think he didn't know that as he had her daughter in the car. Right. But I ain't never in my life, and I told him, you know, I, I wasn't mad at him. I had a feeling type of way. I just wanted to go, and, you know, he was he was doing the service that we call a jitney, and, you know, he was doing, that's why it was the way he made his money, 
And I guess, you know, he was like, well, you know, go ahead or whatever. He knew Charlie and for those, who don't, those of y'all who don't know, a Jitney is a cheap cab driver in the hood. It's a bougie, it's, it's a, a bougie it's a... Uh, uh, Uber for the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> but we loved him and it got us around. Thank you. But go for, ahead. For, for time after my, yeah, even after my mother passed, that used to be my, well, not the same man, but th- that used to be my uh, way to get us around. You, you know, ain't talking about what's his name? Stickums. No, it was, it was another move. man that took Stick us. Stick and move. But Stickum used to be the one that if I had to go somewhere in the middle of the night, because my mother used to take me everywhere. And I used to the car for everything. They mom was a, that's how long, but that's how far back we go. I knew her and her mom because me and her brother used to go to school together. So that's how I met Sam. Yeah. And their mom and stuff. And their mom was like cool as heck. So when we found out about it, like every, it was like heavy on a lot of people because they mom was cool as heck. And then, you know, her brother was pretty well known around the city. You know, he played basketball, he played sports. And so, you know, it was really heavy on a lot of people when we found out about the car wreck. And it was... The one thing is, I, I, I have, I've learned to live with it, and I'm sure that some of us, some people can, some can't. But I learned to live with it as I ever, I I, I, I won't say I, I, I'm not angry, I was for a while. From the drunk driver? It, yeah. What it was is, my mom was going down, and he was coming up the street. And um, he was trying to pass a blunt to his friend in the back seat. And took his eyes off the road. Mm-hmm. To pass a blunt. The center lane, yeah. To pass a blunt. And do I have problem with people seat. that smoke weed or do anything with that sort? Nope. Because you know what, though? My mom was living a good life. She left us in a good position. She always told us, you know, if you want something, go out there and get it. Ain't nobody going to give you nothing. Don't nobody owe you nothing. Just remember, you know... What do you do? Do something. Make sure that you feel right. Your heart. If your heart ain't right, then you you know mm-hmm. you know it ain't right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. one thing I say is to my race, whether it be two weeks, two days, two hours, two years, it could be twenty years. Your mother that left you. She left. She had. It was time, and when then nobody was gonna be able to do anything about it. How I took it. Yeah. But with your mom, I ne- I did not know her. I don't know you, but I always say I learned to give it to God because I was drinking really bad as the mom passed away. And then one night I said, I said, you know what, Lord? I'm tired of drinking. And I said, my mom would not want me to turn to no alcoholic or nothing like that. And I said, tonight I want to go to sleep. Just go to sleep. And I want my son to be able to come home, you know, because then when, when the drinking was going on, I was always with my sister and my daddy. I said, my son to come home. I want us to go to bed tonight. We, I mean, we ate. I don't remember what it was. But I remember we, we sat in the living room. We ate. We went upstairs, and they sat for me forever. But anyway, we went upstairs, y'all. And we went to bed, and I don't know about him, but I remember if he used to wake up, he used to will wake me up, especially after she passed. So I'm going to say that he slept the whole night, but that was, they say he slept like a newborn baby. Mm-hmm. What what they say, washed, fed, and dried. That's how I slept. <laughs> I woke up the next morning. And like a I, newborn baby. <laughs> but yeah, I never, I didn't wait, I didn't get up that night at all. And I was like, because I said, my mom would not want me to drink myself like that. I mean, drinking, not just one or two for it. I was just drinking and drinking the gin and all that stuff. I said, mm-mm. I was tired and I wanted to go to bed. That's why I said, you know what? If you ask them, you shall receive. And I'm and I'm still gonna stick to that one. I want to go to heaven one day too, Roxanne. Shoot, <laughs> I'm like seriously. Shoot, I want to go to heaven. I want to see my mama. I want to see my grandpa, my grandma, my great grandma, my great great. Um, one thing um <clears throat> about it is as far as like. You know, when we come back to the child support, I know this, like like I said, this the hood table. I done said that before. This the hood table. In the hood, you don't never know what's going to happen 
any day <laughs> in the hood, and we both from the hood, like from the hood. Okay, and ain't the you know, and ain't the shame mom. of it. We done, we done saw people get killed, drive-bys. I mean, Baby drug dealers. Born. <laughs> we, I mean, we we from the hood, we seen it all, and we survived the hood. And it's technically speaking, I think I'm still in the hood. Uh, a lot of people. I thought say, we hey, moved up like Georgia Weezy, but we down there still look in certain areas. Cause I said, sure. it ain't it ain't it ain't <laughs> about how I look or what goes on because the hood is everywhere. It's people how you make it. That you ghetto mm-hmm. and all that stuff. No, that's not it. And one thing, I yeah, do we want, is not ghetto. We are not ghetto. We might be hood, but we ain't ghetto. A little, a little. Now you can take me there. It's high. Hold up, it's hold high. up, Sam. You you can take us there. What happened tonight when we was at the gas station, man? Oh. <laughs> oh. You can take us there. Have you ever been at the gas station and you you sit behind people waiting on the gas pump? And what was they doing? Talking. Talk they're lollygagging. Talking to the next car. We up here thinking, oh, okay, they're going to eventually pump the gas. They're going to eventually go in the store. They're going to eventually buy the gas. They're going to eventually come back and pump the gas. They up there lollygagging, going from car to car. He, 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 all the All the gas pumps is taking. So it's like, <laughs> what's going on? Why ain't nobody... <laughs> Pumping that gas. Why is we still here? Samantha, I had to roll this window down and cussed it. I'm like, Sam. Then I was Sam, like, no. let's, let's just go to the other. Let's go to the other lot. Let's go. Mm-hmm, I, let's I go to the other. Though. I mean, let's go to the other side, to the other pump. I found out why we had to go to the other pump, too. Because we had, we had to watch this man's car. The Lord didn't want his car to be stolen a day. With his tight shorts. He didn't want tight shorts to be and, 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 okay. and, and, and catch a cramp then bend over the brother's leg and bust his shorts loose. Who pulls up at the gas I can't station? Breathe. Hold up, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you tell him dead. Honestly, okay. <laughs> you saw me. Well, you saw it. I, I, I saw that. Why Samantha was outside the car when we finally was able to pump the gas. Thank you, Lord. we finally, people start moving around and <laughs> taking their butts home from chilling at the gas pumps like they was in their driveway. Say that. Um, but <laughs> when Sam was outside the car pumping gas, and I hope this guy ain't watching. But um, I may hope he never crossed our YouTube channel. But um, <laughs> when she was out there pumping, I'm up here chilling, playing with my phone in the passenger side. Um, <laughs> and I look over, a car pulls up, and I'm like, "Dang, this dude is cute." And if y'all don't know me by now, I like them dark. I like he was I, I like I like. I, come on now, I like all brothers. But I'm just saying, you see the color of my hair. You see the color of my shirt? Do you see my stole back there? My stole top? I like them black. I like them dark. Mm-hmm. This dude pulled up and he was looking all nice, dark, and juicy. And <laughs> I'm crazy. like, he was looking, <laughs> I'm telling you, he was looking nice, dark, and juicy. He gets out the car. And the shorts was tight. <laughs> <laughs> he gets out the car. And he gets out the car, and he's, now mind you, Sam ain't paying attention because she's on the other side of the car pumping the gas, and I'm on the passenger side looking at this dude like, ooh, he kind of cared. So, um, he gets out the car, and I'm like, ooh, he tall too? Why he shut the door, but didn't shut it all the way? He, like, shut it, like, to where you can, like, reach your fingers in and pull the door open. So I assumed that maybe he was having some door <laughs> issues. But the way he parked up next to us, instead of parking anywhere else in that parking lot, it was like he gave me this look like as if, like, Watch okay, I'm car. parking my car here. Like he was looking me over, like, to see if he can trust me because he left his car, like, ajar. And I'm looking like, this fool just left. He just walked away. His music was on. Mm -hmm. His keys was running. I didn't understand it because I couldn't do that. I ain't leave my car running. But anywho, he he started walking away and I saw them shorts. (laughs) When he was coming back, I looked, I was like. I said, Samantha! Samantha! 
<laughs> now, now, mind you, her door was shut. If Sabrina the door- released the wrong way, all the scene gonna be gone. Just open like like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> ah. All the doors on her side, on the driver's side, was shut, I and I had my door, door open. open door. And I was like, so, I'm trying to yell out the car so she can hear me on the other side. Like, Samantha, Samantha, she didn't hear me. I'm banging on her window on the driver window. Samantha, she finally looks over. Everybody, he didn't went in the store. And, and she I saw him when he came out. She opened the door and said, Samantha, this dude left his car door open. And she was like, Well, shoot. So if I go over there and jack his car, <laughs> he ain't got he ain't he can't even get mad. I said, Samantha, we can't jack his car. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told her about yeah, the like shorts. I and told her about come. the shorts. And he comes out the door as soon as I'm telling her about the shorts. I'm like, look, look, Samantha, look. Them <laughs> shorts were so tight. They was and they was cotton. That's what I was about to say. They was cotton. They like, like you know the jogging pants material, but they were super tight. They were like super yeah, tight. And so I'm cool. like, what the what the I mean it was so funny. It was so funny. I'm like, and then he comes out with a <laughs> ice cup a cup of ice water. He came out the store with a cup of That's ice so water. Funny. And so <laughs> I'm we up here cracking up and laughing at him while he walked into us. And so to me in order to break the laugh, because he looking dead at me and I can't even I'm just like hi. <laughs> so I said, um, what you got in that cup? I said, What you got in that drink? What you got in there? What what's in that cup? He said, None of us on ice water. I'm like, okay. He jumped in his car, slammed the door shut. And, and I was hoping it jumped down I, too hard before I bust off the seam. Dad, those shorts were so <laughs> small <laughs> and tight. I was like, y'all just had to be there. Y'all just had to be there. I was hollering. He was straight from the like the chest up. From the waist up. Seat, from the waist up, down. he was cool. But when I saw those shorts, <laughs> and they was like five inches above the knee. <laughs> Hey, what they call it when at school, when they, man, they say, your, your no. shorts have to be a certain They got to be. He was, he's got to sit home from school. Least, they got to be at least four inches because I used to go to uh, Christian school for junior high, and they always made us wear, like, and you know, I was a tomboy then, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I wore uh, shorts underneath my um my little outfit. For the Christian school, because they 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 use like a I identification card. They use your I, I, identification, like your driver's license, and they would put it at the top of your kneecap. And basically, if your skirt was below the kneecap, because we didn't have like uniforms, we just had like certain type of clothes we could wear. And if we wore skirts, they would have to be like they couldn't be below the um. You know, below the identification, your your driver's license. So, <laughs> them, them shorts was well above the driver's license. No, she don't got her driver's license on my knee. Trying to figure I out how far I'm supposed to. Now, you was probably wearing mini skirts. You little hot tail. But see, I was, I was a tomboy. So, even in church, my mom, she, she would make me wear a dress. <laughs> but I had shorts underneath or I would have like uh, leggings or something like that and it got to the point where she realized that I was not going to wear no skirts and stuff without something underneath so she mm-hmm. started buying me skirts. I was in Ooh, I heaven love I them. was in Ooh, heaven I was wearing them now though when she bought me my first score, I was in <laughs> heaven. I was like, oh my God, it looks like a skirt in the front, but it got shorts in the back. And if I had to knock somebody out today, oh. I, or you know. You know that wasn't because it was like, it. You, it wasn't no dog on But I was like, uniform. I was a tomboy. So after school, <laughs> what I literally did after school, I would take off my clothes. Get dressed in my shorts and t-shirt and my tennis shoes and I would head for the basketball court. <laughs> that, I was a tomboy. If I wasn't heading to the basketball court, I was heading to the alley where we played football and soccer. I was a, I was a tomboy. So she knew. She started buying me skirts and I was in <laughs> heaven. I was like, because the back, I mean, okay, you know how to be in church. I'm tired. Be in church and you can't cross your you can't cross your legs right because I would sit like a boy. 
And my mom be like, close your legs, close your legs. And I'll be like, okay. And I close my legs. Next thing I know, my hand over the seat, sitting just like the dude next to me. <laughs> with my legs open. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> and my mom be like, okay, I, I got something for you. I got stuff for you. And that's when she started buying me skirts, And I was in heaven. I was like, ooh, and they cute. They got the shorts in the back. And I'm telling you, I, I was such a tomboy. I used to fight in church. I used to fight on the church bus. At church a I used to fight at the Christian school. I used to fight in the neighborhood. At the Christian so school. So it was like the, the Christian school that we went to. Swore to Why the spirit. At the school fight? Because it was just, if people mess with you. At the I, school, I, though, much I said the earlier, I said earlier on my life, <laughs> on my last life, I just said this plenty of times. I, I, I never mess with anybody. Never. I never mess with anybody. Sure, we used to I, mess The same well. kind of person you see right now where I'm laughing and I'm <laughs> giggly and I'm friendly. And that has always been me. But growing up in the hood, you always got somebody testing your gangsta. And we, <laughs> the way we grew up, we lived in the hood. We didn't have a lot. So Ain't when I was younger, it. everything that I had came from like the Goodwill, from the thrift store, hand-me-down. <clears throat> so I always would have some girl over here popping off, whoop 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 but I never been the kind of person to just run up on somebody or try to find trouble. People would always bring it to me, and I I, I never had a problem back in then. <laughs> so, no, I never forget. Let me tell y'all a little story. <clears throat> you know, on the hood table, we always tell you real life stories from going up in the hood. I used to fight a lot. I said that already, but I never started trouble. Um, one time, me neither. I was in church. <clears throat> now, the person that I got into it with is my dear, 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 dear friend. Not Sam, but my dear, 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 dear friend right now. To this day, we are like sisters from another mister. Like me and Sam, like sisters from another mister. We are really close. Mm -hmm. But back then, <clears throat> back then, it was different. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I hope D... I wonder if D might come into the chat. Uh, Dorcas, Demetria. Because it's a funny story. It's a funny story. Um, we had a... Okay, we went to church a lot. And we used to always have revivals. Mm -hmm. And we used to always have tent revivals. <laughs> and this particular summer, we had a tent revival. And I think I was approximately... I want to say... 15... I want to say I was about 15. Yeah, I think I was about 15. And me and this little girl, she wasn't that much younger than me. She was a couple of years younger than me. And we was playing around. And we was like, you know, just playing around, hitting each other, just playing around. And you know how little kids do? Sometimes when you're playing around with a little kid, they hit you hard. But you're not hitting them that hard. You know, you're just playing around boxing, just playing around. And this little girl started hitting me real hard. Not to where I can't take her or where she knocked me out, but a little bit harder than she should be because I'm not hitting you that hard. And I'm bigger than you and mm -hmm. older than you. And I kept telling her, okay, okay, it's time to stop now. Time to stop now because you either get serious or you really want to fight. So that's, that's one reason okay. why I've never allowed my children, my sons, to play fight. They can tell you that they in the other room right now. They they hear me talking. <clears throat> they will tell you, honest to God, I've never allowed them to play fight because of this particular reason. And so she's kept I kept telling her, quit, quit hitting me. I'm tired. I'm done. I'm playing. I'm saying she kept hitting me and hit me. Listen, I'm tired of playing. I don't want to fight anymore. You know, I'm gonna hurt you if you keep playing. Okay, she kept going. I hit her. And it was kind of hard. <laughs> And so she went back, I'm going to tell my whoop de whoop I'm going to tell my cousins, I'm going to tell my whoop de whoop I'm like, whatever, girl, bye. Tell <laughs> whatever, girl, bye. They didn't get it. All week doing that revival, all week, I kept hearing all these people, Tanya, such and such supposed to beat you up. Such and such supposed to beat you up because you hit their cousin. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I hate it too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, like, like what? Even and so I'm like, home. okay. 
So every night in church, I didn't tell my mom. Every night in church, I'm hearing, such such supposed to beat you up. They supposed to beat you up. They want to fight you. They want to fight you. And I'm like, okay, I was it's always that person. Yet. I was always that person that never caused trouble. I was never that person that caused trouble. So I kept hearing it all week, all week, all week. And that person <laughs> never came up to me. It never said anything to me. I see that person every night in the church tent revival, and they never did anything. So on the last day of the church service, we under a tent. My mother is an usher. So as ushers in our church, they ushered, and then at the end of the night, like all the drinks that the pastors had or the guest pastors or whatever, all the cups, you know, they would wash the glasses, you know, kind of tidy up. You know, the pulpit, you know, stuff like that, that ushers do. <coughs> and, um, I walked up to the person that said that I kept hearing wanted to fight me. We in church. The tent is literally in the church parking lot, a few feet away from the church. So we in church. <laughs> you banned. I walked up to the person and I was like, what's up? I heard you wanted to fight me. And they was like, yeah, I did say that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, I did say that. I'm like, they was like, okay. I said, well, let's take it over here in the parking lot. Mind you, I don't even want to fight this person, but they kept, I kept hearing they want to fight me, and I'm the kind of person that don't like to be caught off guard. So I'm like, okay, do you want to fight me? Is that what you said? Like, why you want to fight me? Yeah, I said it. I'm like, okay, let's go over here to the parking lot, and we can, you know, handle this in the parking lot. I turn around, next thing I know, all my friends are screaming, Tanya, watch out, Tanya, watch out. The girl that jumped on my back, <laughs> like a frog, and jumped on my back. So we started fighting under the tent. And basically, people was trying to pull us off each other. And, you know, it, 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 was, it was a hot mess. It was a hot mess. When they went inside the church in the um, basement, or not in the basement, but in the kitchen or whatever in the church, to tell my mom, your daughter's outside fighting. <laughs> Let me tell you what kind of relationship me and my mother had. They was like, your daughter's outside fighting. You need to come get your daughter. She turned and looked at them like, okay, where are her brothers? They was like, they outside. And my mom was like, okay. She continued to do what she was doing. Washing dishes, cleaning up. My mother did not lift one finger to come outside because that's how well my mother knew me. When I would get into fights, whether it was at home, at the bus stop, at the basketball court, whatever, they would, your daughter's out there fighting again. Okay, where are her brothers? Make sure she don't get jumped. Because my mother had one experience <laughs> with me and my godmom had one experience with me where they tried to break up my fight and I would black out. Like some like people that? do. No, like for real. You be fighting and you and your, your adrenaline oh, yeah. is going and you cussing and you calling <laughs> the other person names and F you be. You know what I'm saying? When you fighting and you in the zone and somebody mm-hmm. try to break you up, oh, they getting it too. <laughs> and my mother tried to break up one of my fights one time and I accidentally kind of like, you know, <laughs> accidentally. She, that was it. Every time somebody told her after that, even when I was in the church and she was overly, superly religified, she still did not come out that church. She didn't come break up the fight. She was just like, are her brothers out there? Because my brothers was always there to make sure, you know, everything was cool. Like, okay, they messing with sis. She ain't did nothing. We got her back. (laughs) So, as far as, like, what I was saying earlier, as far as, like, picking on people, getting into it with people, um, tomboy, I used to fight a lot, but it was never me just walking up to somebody, like some people do, what's up? I don't like what you wear. I don't like how you look at me. I don't like how, it was never that. It was never that, but I had my fair share of fights. And to this day, me and that girl that I fought under that tent... (laughs) <laughs> we are like this. <laughs> I'm not lying. We are like this. 
My sons call her auntie. Her kids call me auntie. Every holiday, we were at each other's house. We, I mean, we like that. So, I you know. question is, y'all have to repent. That's what me and Roxanne No, I never did know. repent. I never did repent. Roxanne, no, I didn't repent. I was just, I was a child. I was a child. And you know what was the funniest part about that story? Oh, yeah. It was my godmom, who also went to the church. Her daughters was the ones who was like, Taya, watch out, watch out. You know, when the girl came behind me and jumped on me, and it was too late because she was already on my back. And she was out there trying to help break up the fight, and she kept slapping me in my mouth. It was like this. You think I'm going to kick your motherfucking ass? I'm going to no, 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 no. fuck you up with the finger. That's how I went. That's how I went. My godmom was slapping me in my mouth because my my curse game is off the charts, y'all. Mm-mm. I can make up curse words and all that kind of stuff. I was because I was in the That's church. That's why I said Lucifer did take. Over. I was in the church and the devil took over my flesh. And I but see, I be in a zone. I'm just trying to say I be at the zone. And my mom, <laughs> the the relationship that we had, she she knew that zone. And she was just like, okay, who's out there with her? Who is her brothers out there? Is because and I never forget. And I swear we talk about this all the time. <laughs> we talk about this all the time because I was cursing. I we was preachers trying to break us up. I mean, when I say we was fighting under that tent, I say we was knocking over chairs. We about to tear the whole tent down. The tent was just blue. Tear the, tent, the, whole, the tent uh, was blue and white. What they call that? Uh, the tent was, was blue and white. This tent was blue and white. I'll never forget. We was, man, chairs was all over the place. People was trying to break us up, guys and pastors, and we was scrapping. But they we called us up, y'all was it? We was, we was scrapping. We was scrapping. And when they was trying to pull me apart, I was cussing. I was cussing all. I was calling this child every every name in the book, and my godmother up there just flapping me in my lips. Stop talking. You can't say that in church. Then shut up. Shut up, girl. You can't say that in church. You can't curse in church. I'm like, no, fuck that. I don't give a fuck about that bitch. I'm gonna take her mom out. I will never forget that. No, <laughs> because the next day, my my lips was sore as hell, and well, I will never forget that. that. What they call that thing? You know the church behind, right no. down the street behind the uh, store. You know that. You know to get the uh, car wash over there <clears throat> behind um, the car wash right here on the next block. It used to be a furniture store right off the interstate, right off of Sorensen. Oh yeah, that yeah. car wash right there in that <laughs> building right behind the car wash. They, that was gone. our church. It's still there. It's just, it's just old and it needs to be tore down because it ain't been a church in a long time. But right yeah, right the there. Everybody goes to buy metro. N- no, the car wash right here behind Cubby's. On the way up to the Redmond Apartments. Oh, okay. That yeah, car wash yeah. right there, the building oh, right behind oh, it. That know, used to be I'm our church. church. <laughs> that used to be our church. It was that parking lot. That parking lot is like two lights away. What they thing the last uh, week? What you say y'all was at? What? We a revival. revival. That's it. Girl, and it was the last night. It was the last night of revival, and we were scrapping. And when I say we were scrapping, we were scrapping. They were trying to pull us apart. <laughs> but, <laughs> and that's why I say my mama started buying me skorts. <laughs> because they were more. <laughs> uh, she wouldn't have to worry about nothing flying up in the air. Nothing because I used to. Mm-hmm. I used, Marisa, they called in Texas. They I called used to move furniture. I, yeah, we was moving furniture. Man, but I swear that lady, I love her to death. When we became friends, it was when she had her first son and I had my first son, and we started going back to the same church where mm-hmm. we had gotten to it at. And we just somehow just, it was us growing up mm-hmm. and us having kids. And we, I mean, we've been tied ever since. We've been tied ever since. And I would do anything for her and vice versa. And bet not nobody mess with her. <laughs> bet not nobody mess with her. But yeah, we were scrapping. But yeah. <laughs> Roxanne said, you literally tore it up from the floor. Man, we got so many stories. 
like I said, this is the hood table. In the hood, you never know what happened in the hood <laughs> from day to day. When you wake up in the morning in the hood, all kind of mess could happen. And this is kind of how our channel is. We can start right here and end up over here. And we always want to give you a story from the hood, a tales from the hood every time. <laughs> all right. Every time. But you guys, you guys have been great. She said Lucifer took over. <laughs> I said Lucifer took over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that person anymore. I swear. I haven't been that person anymore. Like me, back then, I would fight if somebody approached me with wanting to fight. You know, somebody, if, if, if you talk behind my back, I didn't really care. But that night in church, I was like, all week long. This girl want to fight you. This girl want to fight you. This girl says she going to do this. This girl going to fight. I'm like, we in the same took, church. Took it all we in the same choir. Because I used to be in the church choir. And she did too. So we in the same choir. We had choir rehearsal together. And I keep hearing this girl want to fight me. I'm like, <laughs> so I just walked up to her. And it was more like, I heard you want to fight me. Is that true? Like, why, why you want to fight me? Because of something that happened between me and your little cousin? Come on, why you want to fight me? She said, yeah, I said I wanted to fight you. Okay. Well, there's plenty of space and opportunity right over here in the parking lot outside the tent. She had a bar station <laughs> over here fight at over we, here. We didn't quite make it to the parking lot, but... Mm -hmm. Anywho, anywho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. But, yeah. So, anywho, um... I try to, I, back to the kids, I try to teach my kids that if you can walk away, walk away. Mm -hmm. If people bumping their gums mm -hmm. behind your back, you just hearing, you know, just, you know, just hearing it in your ear, you know, it, it ain't always where you have to approach the subject and get into an altercation. Sometimes you just gotta walk away. Because one thing about it, today ain't yesterday. Back in the day, we could fight. Five times a day, wake up the next day and fight five more times, and you go about your business. Nowadays, like um, <coughs> Remy Ma and Brittany Taylor, Brittany Taylor got knocked out by somebody. <laughs> she claimed Remy Ma did it, but Remy Ma claimed she was at home the whole time during that event. So I don't know what's going on. I did a live on it earlier on my Tanya's Primetime TV uh, channel. So y'all over here on the hood table, if y'all ain't subscribed to my other channel, Tanya's Primetime TV, T-A-N-Y-A-S, Primetime, all one word, TV, media reviews. I did a live on that earlier. Remy Mata had to go to jail. She had to turn herself in. She had to bond out. All this over some girl that claimed she, you know, punched her lights out. So she didn't. They said, her lawyer said Remy Ma got proved that she wasn't even at the event. And they said the girl was just clout chasing. And trying to get a coin because she hired a civil lawyer immediately. Immediately she hired a civil lawyer. But anyway, that's a whole other story. I recorded that on my Tanya's Primetime TV channel, so check it out over there. Um, but is there um, any closing points you want to make about this child support? No? Okay, well... I guess my closing point is, pay um, pay, pay that mother. <laughs> what you say? Pay that mother. Pay them. Pay them. Pay them. <laughs> no, but for real. Take um, care of your children if possible. If take not, care of your children as much as you can. you can, do the best job. Yeah. If you can't pay the whole child support, do something. Spend time. Do something. Spend time. Time is way more valuable than, money. than a paycheck. Yep. So time sometimes is way more just valuable going to get them from school. Stopping by for, you know. Playing ball with them in the front yard. Catches school, the best. Catches the best. Helping them with their homework. Talking oh, to them about the birds and the bees, about girlfriends being they lend in air when they need something. Time is way more valuable than child support. Now, that don't mean, okay, I'll spend time with them and I ain't got to pay. No, that's not what that means. And as far as women, even if he doesn't pay, if don't, that man don't is not problem. violent... If he is not um, harm, you know, if he, he doesn't bring harm to the child or you, um, don't keep the child away from the man if he owes you money. Because in the end, that child will grow up 
and be like, hey, mama, I didn't have no relationship with my father. Because of money. Because and it's of not money. That they owe you really. You know, that's where men, get the pro- men got a problem with it. And I do mm-hmm. too. When a woman or a man says somebody owe them the child support, they uh, they don't own the child support. You know, it's for the kid. But like I said, if they can't pay, try to do something to make try it where you something. can. But if you can't pay, you just ain't got the money or you just can't get, you know, get a job at the time, spend time with them. Go by, like she said, help with the homework. You know, play ball. Sit on the steps. Go to their games. You. Go to their activities, to their extracurricular activities, to their basketball, football, wrestling, track, whatever. Um, it ain't musical always event. Money. Just money be there. Be there. Money is not... Money is important. It does take money to raise a child. But right. that that precious one-on-one time, that bond, there is no way. If I have to do this mm-hmm. all over again, I do it the same way. I never kept my children away from their father. Never. It didn't matter if they mm-hmm. owed $1 mm-hmm. or $1,000. Never. I ever. I, I was the one. <laughs> come and get them. Hey, your daddy coming. <laughs> they ain't all excited. Yeah, mm-hmm. daddy coming. They never knew anything about finances. They never knew that mom was working two jobs, you know, because of what she wasn't getting from the other. They never knew that. They just knew mom was a hard worker. That, mm-hmm. That's that's what they knew when they was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as you women, you greedy this women. This lash is done. <laughs> you greedy women <laughs> or you selfish that. women that go out there and get child support, but the child sees like 1% of it. Come on now. Come on, sis. Come on, sis. And that's them getting the car on, for sis. you to go swipe it for yourself. But they about to stop that. They did say that. They said that they was going to put limitations on what the cars can buy. And a lot of times... They already have. They gonna, like, oh. with, with, with certain things... Okay, they started with the... um, <clears throat> They started with the stamps. So no and they started, the night. They started with the stamps <laughs> and they started with the... Uh, welfare and they started but but they're they're continually making changes to to try to make sure ensure that women are not just going out there just partying off the money just you know things like that but men if you know you have a great woman that you were with and y'all broke up for whatever reason and you know she's a great mother y'all try to come to agreement where you know know, don't trip when you gotta pay that child support because if you had a great woman and you know she's a great parent you should already know that she is not going to abuse the child support system um that she is going to work as hard as you can and make sure you and your child stay in each other's lives so i'm always the type go ahead sam I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm always yeah. the one. I say about keeping them away from the opposite, the after parent or whatever it is. Don't do that. And if you got several kids with like different moms, dads, or whatever, for real, if you trust that person enough and they really can't, sometimes, you know what? I never had to do it, but with my younger son, his grandma used to tell me all the time, if you need me to keep an eye on your, the other one, I will. I used to mm-hmm. just joke and say, oh, don't think, don't ever get up and lie and tell my son that I stopped you from picking him up because you could have took the other one. Mm-hmm. I got a couple nieces and nephews. I could have called up their mamas and they probably sent them with you too. Mm-hmm. So don't ever think that, you know, sometimes we think that, oh, they owe us the money. I think it's a courtesy on behalf right. of doing a part, of, on, on anybody part of doing your, excuse me. I feel like it's a, a courtesy that they able to be able to even give you anything. Some people don't ever do anything for their children, but I would feel like on that level, just because we really don't know each other's situation after we depart or whatever, but don't keep your kids away from they, the right. other parents. I just hate that. Don't do that. And grandparents, they hurt more than anything. And I'm telling y'all something, and I'm going to leave it at that with me about this. I told my son, uh, baby mom, or whatever they're doing over there. I said, the first time, and I told this before my grandson was born, and I love him to pieces. He, he, he's special, he's special, but he mine. <laughs> but I tell you what I did, and I'm serious. I told her, I said, the first time I get that call, or that whatever, you're talking about some, I can't see him, and 
Yeah, and it's it's a mess. That's it. That's the first. That's the first and the last time. It's all you ain't even got to worry about me no more. Then you can say what you want to about me, and that's what any of futures. And I pray my son to stay with her because I really think that's a good thing. That's why they have grandparent loss. Yeah, because <laughs> you threaten me and tell me something. Oh, you ain't you can't see the kid. My son already Bye. know. I told my son before if y'all do wrong by y'all kids. And y'all don't take care of y'all kids and y'all be dead big dogs. I'm disowning y'all. I'm disowning y'all because I ain't raised y'all like that. And y'all saw how hard that I worked to raise y'all, take care of y'all, and provide and make sure y'all had everything y'all needed. From the expensive tennis shoes to payments for a football camp, basketball camp, I mean, prom, homecoming, school clothes, school lunches, and every school lunches. Oh my God! <laughs> I, you I didn't I, eat. My and son, they want to about child support. My son, my old, youngest son, hit me up the other day, calling me from school. Mom, I need some more lunch money. I'm like, okay, hold on. God dang, ain't you out of school yet? You need to hurry up and graduate. <laughs> because, <laughs> I was like, okay, hold and on. Let me month. transfer some money into your your student account. I've been paying school lunches for so long. I'm like, oh my god, that is one bill that I'm gonna be glad. I ain't gonna be gone. To the new thing. It took it's like a dollar something, a dollar fifty. I don't know what I'll pay for. So long, I I'm like, girl. I mean, it ain't like a humongous amount, but it's like forty dollars a month, and it's like not a humongous amount, but come on. I one think kids is, should eat free. One thing the school I think all did. kids should eat free. <laughs> And, it, and, and let them share it. It ain't all that because I'm sorry. No, they don't even be wanting the kids to share that they love. dry looking stuff. That Gonna girl, put some water up on it. Girl. The, the whole holes up on it. The thing that I used to love the most from lunch, from school, was the pizza. They and those, um, the, the, Sal- the Salisbury steaks. I ain't like them. And the tacos. Everything else could Oh, you talking about that, r- that round, brown looking Yeah, the round with the gravy oh, it was all right. It was all right. And but mine was the um when it was those Salisbury steaks was fire and you can get them at Aldi's. They in that <laughs> you can get them at What's Aldi's. That one? Uh, the, the, and it was it was like turkey, the and nacho dragon. nachos. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, you talking about the um the they turkey? They had no nacho when I was the, in school. They had nacho nachos when I was in school. Oh, yes. You know you ain't that older than me. You know, we had nacho machos. It was basically yeah, yeah, nachos with some right. chips and chips and hamburger. Nacho machos. That's what yeah, we call it them. It was nacho when I went to school. You know, I eat, a, I eat the heck out of na- I eat the I eat a nacho up. Okay. Remember, <laughs> remember the ribs? Remember the riblets? Like oh, the yeah, McDonald's, yeah. No, but they, did have that. they tasted better than them McDonald's riblet things. It's horrible. They horrible. The McRib, they horrible. That ain't no McRib. That ain't no McChicken. That ain't no McMeat. I don't know what that is. It's, it's a Mc, it mix of a call it. It's a Mc, mix of a call it. I don't know what you <laughs> call it. I don't know what it is. But that one in school, that, that riblet, mm, they had a little oh, broccoli so, on the yeah. side. Girl. What about that one though? Remember, it used to be they give you the gravy, the you mashed potatoes, the turkey with the mashed nice potatoes and, and gravy, and it was chunks of it. Yes, oh, that, that, that was fire. Water. That was see, that was good. some of the stuff they made. And then the was one they gave us sausage and eggs right. with some of that up. What, what's that? That butt? runny eggs. No, oh, no, we just had eggs that was made from up. And, and they, they gave the meat. From they gave the meat. They made from eggs. that powder. And stuff. Yeah, go it, was them, to it was them, 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 them commod- so, commodity eggs. That's the mix. Yeah, and I Kill know all about the commodity the eggs because we was on commodity and wick and the cheese and butter. Well, they and they some sausage. That, that thick, Ooh, with that the butter thick, bread. bread cheese, that, was, that make the, the best cheese. I had toast the sandwiches. <laughs> oh, I want me. Oh. Them, that cheese, the one that molded. I don't even like <laughs> almost almost before you even had it, it molded like in a week. Oh, but you would just cut it off. Cheese. You cut that government cheese off and you cut that oh, mold off that, that government up. cheese. That's the best macaroni and cheese in the world. Girl, girl. Yeah. Throw that stuff in the oven, underneath the oven in the broiler part. Now that okay. bang, that's some good stuff. <laughs> Not wrong. Oh, you said Roxanne said a lunch looks like that crap today. 
That, it looked like it needs some water up on it. Roxanne <laughs> said in Hawaii dog. there was no such thing as grandparents. I didn't know. Oh, she said, no, my bad. Roxanne, I read it wrong. She said there was no such thing as grandparents law in Hawaii. And I hope they change that because... I would be one of those grandparents that will take you to court if I can't see my, my grandbabies and my sons know how I love my babies, my little nieces and nephews and <clears throat> uh uh-uh. uh. They ain't even they ain't even think about kids. They ain't even think about kids. They ain't got, <laughs> got kids on their radar. And I'd be like, when you decide to have some, I want like four five from you. I want about three four from you. Uh-oh. And they looking at me like we ain't trying to have kids, Mom. What 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 part of that don't you understand? You'd be lucky if you get one. I'd be like, one? I'm one? Cool. I'm cool on them with the one. I, get, I mean, I guess I would have to be cool. My nerves got shot with that. But I don't know. I want, oh. like, I want several. Stop messing. Get no. down. Get down. I, want several. I said, get down. He ain't doing that. All the time. What did I tell down. you? When I said, I said, I, we and Sam just talked about this like last week. I, I said, when I have my down. grandbabies, they going to have their own area in the house <laughs> so they can tear it up. Because I remember when my mom was alive and my sons would go over her house and, oh, Lord, she had them, like, secluded in this little area. And they, 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 don't, don't touch that. Don't Ooh. touch that. Don't touch that wet knot. Don't touch that glass. <laughs> don't touch that. Don't touch that. Tanya, get your son. He touching my, you <laughs> know. I mean, she had a lot of fragile stuff in her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's why I never got into that kind of stuff. Like, as far, as long as you know me, have you ever seen a wet knot in my house? Um, a wet knot? A glass, anything like glass, angels or glass? I said, well, that's the thing. I was like, I'm never, 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 I'
And then you, then my 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 people had a bad. They put both sides in the sink. It is old school, Maurice. That's old school. I'm yeah, telling you. I want that. I don't have, and I had actually reached out to someone to help me do my interior decorating because I I, I like the idea of interior decorating and all kind of different colors and all that. But I'm a plain Jane when it comes to stuff like that because I don't want to do too much. You know, I don't want to do too much like. You know what I grew up with, so I always kind of kept it plain Jane. It looks nice. It's just not overly like in your face decorations. <laughs> so I had reached out to somebody. And they was like, "Well, I have this in mind. I have that in mind." I said, "As long as I don't have trinkets all over the house, I cannot do the trinkets. I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't." The 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 the, the karaoke cabinet with fifty thousand pieces in there, and you gotta continually dust and use glaze and, and one on, all that. No, and both living rooms, mm -mm, no nope. big ones too. I, 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 I ain't for all that. I ain't for all that mess. <laughs> I you still high stuff up in them though. I, 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 I used to like the high stuff. We know what's happening, so they Girl, found it. They know who belong to. I remember my one good friend, and I love her to death. So if she's watching, please forgive me. I won't say your name. But um, I remember my one friend had a stepdad, and he loved elephant um, designs and um, pieces and stuff like that. I swear to God, they had like 500 elephants mm -hmm. in the house. Like all over the place in karaoke cabinets up above the curtains on the coffee tables on the end tables on the floor big ones little ones I mean just all in the kitchen in the bathroom I mean it was like elephants and then there's people who like angels they the same way or the people who like the little black babies oh you know yeah, the little yeah. black the little black um southern what do you call them things they be dressed up in old. Looking and, like old and, and maids and the, the, the bonnets on their heads and looking like little slaves. And they used to put it over the toilet paper. They had toilet yeah. paper and vacuum covers. It'd be like hundreds of them all over the house. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, we about to get out of here. We both got to get up early in the morning. Early in the morning. So we really, really appreciate you guys. But look at okay. Sam over here yawning. She about to fall home. asleep on us, y'all. <laughs> but she did work today. Uh, what's today again? Friday? Friday. We did. We both Friday worked today. The, but yeah, I don't know. Friday I got a little the, bit more energy. But still, we both need to get our rest. Because <laughs> so we both got to be at work tomorrow. And maybe we'll go see a movie this weekend. Maybe Sunday, maybe. Or Monday. or I don't know. I, just, I think I got to Well, I'll tell y'all one thing. We gonna go see uh, Intruder with Megan Good. I think that's her name. And Megan Michael Good somebody. and Michael Ely. Michael Ely, y'all, y'all go see that that movie. Um, oh, you know we do the sisters from another Mister Movie Review segment. Oh, yeah. So we are gonna go see that within the next week, probably the next four or five days. And you guys, make sure you check it out because we're going to come with y'all with a review and we want to get y'all feedback on the movie and everything. So the, the reviews, though, won't be for like a week or two because we like to give people time to see a movie when it first come out. So it'll be like in two weeks when we do the review. So make sure y'all check out The Intruder. And in the meantime and in between time, Prime Time <laughs> Squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed, and we out. Deuces, deuces up, deuces up, deuces up, deuces up. Good night, y'all. Enjoy your evening.